Back again, this time with a creature animation. Well, sorta. Of. But before we continue, make sure to pay respect to the holy trinity of YouTube. Like, comment and subscribe. And while you're at it, hit that bell notification button so you don't miss any of the future uploads. Ah, begging for activity by your viewers. Gotta love it. But seriously, it helps a lot because the algorithm loves it. And back to the video. This is a 2D animation. That means that I'm quite limited with what I can do. Especially taking in consideration that it wasn't me who did the artwork but another artist, meaning it was not pre-prepared for the animation. It was just a flat, non-layered piece of art. That's not so much of a problem for the scenes with inanimate objects. But when I have to draw, clone, copy, paste, whatever, rework, a character or a creature design, it's a completely different type of beast I need to handle, because all of the intricate little details and whatnots. But mostly because copying another artist's style is a walk through hell. I'm not a great illustrator, I never claim to be. I just do my thing as best as I can and try to make my artwork look believable and tangible. Other artists have their own styles, brush sets, types of strokes, stylus settings and so on. Trying to figure all of that out in the short amount of time I have to do the animation is just an impossible task. Another artist with more years of experience might be able to do it, but that's not me. This one was not an easy task for two main reasons. One being what I just mentioned, copying another artist's style. By the way, speaking of another artist, you should really check Heather out. She's not just a great artist, but a great person as well. I had the pleasure to speak to her in person regarding another animation I made for Paleo Games. You'll see it next week. I'd recommend having her on your team if you're making a game of your own. That's why I'll leave the links to her portfolio and social media in the description. And the other reason is of more complex nature. Animating an insectoid. Let me explain. Every time you make a piece of art, the first thing you do is research. In this particular case, I'm making an applied art piece from another applied art piece, bringing an illustrated creature to life through animation. Sidetrack to a fun fact, anima means soul in Latin. That actually means that while you're animating something, you're giving it soul. Side quest complete, back to the jibber jabber. As the artist who drew the original piece had to research the anatomy and different types of insects, I had to research how insects move and perform while being still. That's where I encountered the problem. The insect's respiratory system is completely different than any other animal in the world. Meaning, you can't actually see them breathe because, well, first, they have a hard shell, so you can't actually see what's going on beneath it. And second, they don't have lungs, rather a series of bulb-like openings called spiracles and a network of tubes called tracheae. I know you didn't hope for a biology lesson, neither did I, but there it was. The whole point being, I needed to make an insectoid creature move in an interesting manner without making it breathe. Insects, on the other hand, have their little ticks when they rapidly move the parts of their bodies. Luckily, this particular creature had wings included in its design, so I could at least play around with that a bit. But to make things more interesting, I decided to separate the head plate thingy, the antennae and the head from the body and try to do something with that. It took me some time, but I did it and now I had something to work with. On to the animation. You'll see that I used body as a parent to the head and the head as a parent to the antennae and the head plate thingy, which is the only object aside from the wings that I placed in 3D space, so it can move to and from the viewer, that being you in this particular case. I placed some puppet pins onto the body, repositioning them rhythmically to make the shoulder shell appear like it's moving rapidly. The rest of the body animations were just simple rotations with keyframes placed in such a way to make them speed up and slow down. And for the final touch, I used some solid color layers, masked them out to appear as atmospheric lights and used some free stock footage of smoke and dust particles, which I downloaded from VidEasy and Vidivo. Links in description. I put them in screen blending mode and seamlessly looped them so that the video can run for as long as it needs to, serving the purpose of waiting screen and all. Speaking of which, the waiting screen I mean. This video will be featured in the upcoming podcast by Paleo Gaming, where some cool people will play their upcoming tabletop RPG, Omega Horizon. In the previous video, check the card in the upper right corner. I mentioned that it's a space punk sci-fi game set in a dystopian future. It's built around the roll and keep dice system, where players roll an amount of six-sided dice determined by their rank in a given skill group and keep the highest values, limited by an associated attribute. 
For instance, a character with 6 ranks in the Engineering skill group and 3 ranks in Intellect would roll 6 dice and keep the highest 3 results. Omega Horizon also features quite engaging rules for cooperative skill roles to make all the players feel like their participation actually matters. There's also a nested skill system, which allows players to decide whether their character will be broadly proficient in a set of skills, a skill group such as athletics, or is more specialized for one or more skills in that skill group, such as climb or swim. The game has more than just this interesting concept. I had the pleasure to gaze upon the rulebook, well, the current version anyway, and you can do it too if you visit their Discord server, join the community and follow the download links, which I will leave down in the description below the video. And I think that's it for this video. I don't think there's a lot to say anymore. Aside from follow me on my other social media at Crafty Tabletop, mostly everywhere. Also give Paleo Gaming a follow and also give Heather a follow, the original artist that provided this piece of art. Until the next time, this is Crafty and I bid you farewell.